Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg, and I'd like to talk to you today about uh, social security disability and digestive system problems. And this could be medical conditions, uh, diseases, uh, could result from injuries that affect your digestive system. And my experience has been that these cases are quite compelling to disability judges. Um, <clears throat> they recognize that the digestive system is sort of a key component to your health in general, that uh, people with bad digestive system problems are gonna have a really difficult time working. And if you can present the right evidence, you stand a very, very good chance at, at winning. And the things I'm talking about would be inflammatory bowel disease, um, other digestive system issues that cause malnutrition, for example, uncontrolled bleeding, chronic diarrhea, constipation, just things that make it very difficult for you to function reliably eight hours a day, five days a week. Now, the, the, the GI listing in the Disability Blue Book is listing number five. And I'm going to have a link here on the screen to listing number five. And the first thing I would tell you is if you have a digestive problem, a serious digestive system problem, print out listing five, take it to your doctor and say, do any of these resonate? Do any of these, do I fit within any of these? And if I do, please give me a narrative report where you describe how I meet the requirements of this listing. And realize the listing is gonna ask for the formal medical diagnosis, as well as some, some comments about how that diagnosis, how this condition affects you functionally. So again, the listing itself is a good place to start. Now, I will tell you that a lot of digestive system cases are approved early because people do meet the listing. And if you meet the listing, then you win automatically. You don't need to go to a hearing. You don't need a lawyer. And you just move on. Um, so I don't see a lot of cases in the digestive with bad dig people with bad digestive systems because a lot of those cases are approved early. I do see more of them later on when the person's condition has gotten worse over time. Or, which is even more common, the documentation that was provided to the adjudicator is incomplete. Sometimes uh, when you file your claim, the adjudicator or claims adjuster for Social Security will ask your doctor to provide copies of medical records. Doctors sometimes are not real good about doing that. It costs them money. They don't they don't provide the records or a complete set of records. The adjudicator doesn't have, any, have anything. There's no time to follow up. They simply deny based on what they've got when if they had requested all those records, uh, then you would have gotten approved. So when I get in a case, into a case, the first thing I look at is what did the adjudicator have? And if we need to supplement that, we do. And in many cases, we can get these cases approved either on the record before a hearing or even at the reconsideration level. So uh, that's step one is to look at the listing and see if you meet a listing. Step two would be to argue, and this is usually going to end up at a hearing, that your medical problem, your digestive system medical problem, has so impeded uh, your capacity to function that you would not be a reliable worker. And, and again, examples that come to mind would be someone who has uh, lack of control of his or her bowels, fecal incontinence, or urinary incontinence for that matter. Someone who has uh, chronic diarrhea because uh, th there's been maybe surgery to resect the bowel. And the chronic diarrhea is such where this individual um, needs to get to the bathroom, has urgency, has to get very, there very quickly, and still has accidents at times. And judges see those cases and say, this is, there's no way this person could, could work. So if you're having those type of situations, you can document those, and you even can keep a calendar and document those. That can go a long way to convincing the judge um, that you've got a, a problem. Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease. Again, sometimes these are not diagnosed right away, but if you get that diagnosis and you can sort of illuminate it with examples of what you've gone through, and, and really the, the best evidence in, in many cases would be testimony from you about some of the embarrassing incidents you've experienced because of this and the pain and discomfort and the bloating that you've got, uh, that can really go a long way uh, as well. So those are some of the things um, that I see in the digestive system area, I think, again, it's a very, very compelling type of medical problem. And I think if you have been turned down, you should definitely pursue it. Contact an attorney, contact me. And I think we'd have a good shot at, at winning, especially if you're having situations that keep you in the bathroom for 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time, or it requires you to take unscheduled breaks or miss excessive time from work because of your symptoms or even side effects of the medications you're on. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, I would urge you or suggest to you that you um, 
If you like this, give it a thumbs up on YouTube or like it on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, join our Facebook page so you can keep updated with all things new here. Um, and of course, if you have any questions about this or any other social security matter, please let me know.